What's up everybody, Matt Chambers here, and I'm going to show you something. I've got a couple of videos out here. One is a rather long, but really good one, about preparing AutoCAD layers for Photoshop in AutoCAD. And there's a very specific reason that I do that. I've also got a quick rendering example, and I don't think I use the exact, maybe I do, that looks the same. I think I do use the same files. Some of you pointed out, I don't really show you how I get these into Photoshop, so I'll do that right now. And I apologize, I don't have my nice microphone, so the audio quality won't be as good, and I'd rather do this rather quickly. So you can, in Photoshop, either open that PDF directly, and you can only do one page at a time. You can't bring them all in magically, but that's okay. So it doesn't take too long, which is also why I stress in this one here, where to go. The uh, AutoCAD to uh, Photoshop to be very thoughtful and efficient so you don't have to make any more layers than you need to. This is the, I won't say wrong, it's not the most efficient way to do it because you have to select your resolution and when you do this it rasterizes the image so you lose all that really good vector information. So I'm going to do cancel, show you a better way to do it. And for this you have to have Illustrator. So if you don't have Illustrator, you would just need to do that process and rasterize it for each layer and do some creative cutting and pasting. I'm going to, in Illustrator, open up that PDF. And as with Photoshop, you can only do one page at a time. But notice as I go through these thumbnails that that square is perfectly aligned on each one. That's really important. And I'm only going to do this first one for now. And here's the trick. Use the direct select tool and select, draw a selection window just around that square because there's some other stuff in here you don't want to select. Just want that. I will do my keyboard shortcut to copy. Back in Photoshop, I will do new and Photoshop will keep the same aspect ratio of whatever is on your clipboard. So don't worry about that right now or even the color mode. Just know that it is the same aspect ratio in Photoshop, keyboard shortcut to paste, super important, do smart object. That really embeds the Illustrator document in the Photoshop document. And you can see that from the layers dialog, that little icon right there. All right, so back here. I'll close this because we don't even need that anymore. And you also have to do that because Illustrator won't let you open the same PDF more than once. This time I will open the second, and as before, take the select tool. But you wanna be careful because on this one, look at that little piece of vector information right there. That will mess up the pasting when you do the smart object. So just be watching out for that. Direct select tool, very important. And I just want this square because I know it perfectly aligns. I also know that it is a square, which is important. Back in Photoshop, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut for paste, smart object, and hit enter. Notice how these align perfectly. And I just did the same one twice. You know what? Because I think I forgot to actually copy this. Let's try that one more time. Paste, smart object. There we go. That one aligns. I have an extra one of those. Let's get rid of it. So notice these are perfectly aligned. You would do that for each layer. You can use the marquee tool on these very easily. So let me get the right marquee tool. If I select here, do a quick mask. It's very tiny. Let me make that bigger so you can see it. There we go. So I've created a mask. Now I can go in here and create other layers and then start painting. I should really make these different colors because I always get my Illustrator interface and my Photoshop one mixed up. So if I were to drag that mask up here, Alt-Delete, I can see it's only coloring the part, or I can only see the part that is masked. And that is really what I'm showing how to do in more detail in this video, the quick plan painting slash rendering. Okay, some of you might say, well, that's a horrible resolution. That's like 72 DPI or something like that, right? Um, yes, it is very bad resolution, but this is why smart objects are very powerful because once this is assembled, you're always linking to vector information even though that looks very low resolution. 
two cool things here I'll show you. If you double click on the smart object icon, it opens it up in Illustrator. In this instance, it happens to be an Illustrator object that is being smart. So here I've got all the vector information. Maybe that shrub is not there, or maybe there are a couple more of those. Let's try this really quick. Copy, paste, 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 etc. Maybe this was a big old one here. So I'll save this, close it, go back to Photoshop, and that smart object will update. Look at that. I put a giant shrub. Maybe it's a water feature. It's now a water feature or something in whatever that other drawing is. The other thing on resolution, let me show you this. Let's go to the image size, and I'll effectively increase my resolution by an order of magnitude just by adding a zero. It looks kind of grainy here, but because these are smart objects, watch what happens when the image size gets done processing. Let's find out that same area. Look at that, nice upscale. So yes, we make fun of Hollywood for constantly saying enhance, but when you are using smart objects, you can enhance your drawing. If your smart objects are indeed linking to vector objects in this process that I've shown you. So hopefully that fills in the gap between what I'm doing here and uh, the previous one creating these PDFs. Important to note too, I use these layers to just create the masks. And these smart objects layers kind of exist on their own. So what I'll do often is create a new layer. I'll go to my vector smart object and I will use my marquee tool to create selections. There's other ways to create selections. Then I'll highlight another layer and click on the quick mask. So then that is there. Oftentimes I'll just put all of these in their own folder, which if you look really closely in this video, I've done that. And then of course you want to name these logically. So I hope that helps connect those two videos. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help out more.